something interesting is going on with Luke Rockhold. I can't put my finger on it. There's something more here than meets the eye. Luke Rockhold is a former champion who is still with the organization and can't get a fight. And as Luke tells the story, it's just that. I can't get anybody to fight me. That is a, That would be a hard guy to get a fight for, right? Luke has no ranking. He's as good of a middleweight as has ever done it. So it's a tough night out that you don't get much for in terms of credit in terms of rankings, in terms of where do I go from here? Can Luke still demand a co-main event or a main event spot? Right, If you're an up-and-coming fighter and you're guaranteed you're going to be at least a co-main because you're attached to the former champion, you take some risks, you take some opportunity. But Luke is a hard night out for anybody. I don't know that he's declared weight classes, though the best that I can defer and decipher by reading his interviews, he is back to 185. So as I'm staring at that, I'm going, you know, who, who should he fight? And Luke's never done a great job of calling somebody out. Luke's done a very good job of letting people know, I'm back, I'm healthy, I'm ready, I'm in the pool, I'm looking, I'm training, all these other things, but he hasn't done a good job of saying a name. And one name that I've always wanted for Luke was Chris Weidman. I understand that Chris is rehabbing, so we're not going to have that one right now. Who else do you put with Luke? And we can do it the old school way. We can just pull a name up and then start from scratch. But usually when you have a former world champion, you have part of the story already told. One reason you're, as a promoter, you're not sweating writing that pretty big check is because you have a former champion who has part of the story already told. But that's the one thing that Luke keeps leaving out is a name. A why are we here type thing. There's people I would love to see Luke fight. And I, and I think I could argue for you main events that you'd want to fight too. Here, let me just give you an example. Hazmet Shemaev's going to fight Luke Rockhold. Are you watching? Yeah, you bet, bet You bet your ass you're watching. And you can also see where that would be very advantageous, where Hazmet would need to prove himself and be in there with a former champion, with a great, who, by the way, because of the rankings and just through happenstance, they tend to qualify for each other. Now, Hazmat Shemaev appears that he's going to be down at 170 pounds, even though that is an absolutely set in stone. So somebody needs to go after Rockhold. And you still have a former champion that you're in there with, right? There was a time when we knew how this was going to end. Luke's going to beat you. But now maybe we're not in that time. Now, maybe it is a little bit more of a question. Okay, great. Well, what can you bring me? If we're going to be partners tonight, what can you bring me? And that's where Luke could really benefit by going after a, Dar a Darren Till, a Paulo Acosta, right? One thing that Darren Till and Paulo Acosta have in common is they're not going to be fighting less than co-main event in their next contest. And I think that that's important that Luke start to look at it this way. I see so many guys get lost in the ranking. The ranking is not what you want to be focused on in terms of numbers. Am I the last fight of the night or am I the second to last fight of the night? That's where you want to make sure you are. So even if you've got to go fight a guy, you think that this comes hostile, you must be aware enough to understand me and this person who I don't care for, who I'm even going to fight in front of the world, are partners. So what is this he has to offer me? Luke is going to bring a resume. Luke is going to bring a former world championship with him. What do you offer to Luke? And if you are a marquee guy, if you are a main and a co-main and you need somebody to get in there with, this is where this starts to be an advantage, but I haven't heard Luke call anybody out. Luke's been a, bit, a little bit loose. I mean, he's spitting plenty of venom. I read something this morning. He was talking about Adesanya, called Adesanya beatable, said that it was an easy fight. I like it. I like when guys start talking that way. The reason I can't do anything with that is Adesanya's got business with a guy named Marvin Vittori coming up, just by example. So whatever shots we take at Adesanya to get a headline, it doesn't bring us any closer to getting a fight made. And that's the step that we're at right now with Luke. We're trying to get a fight made. Promoting and building and telling the story of a fight is something that we do next. Two and three and four. Step one, got to get a fight made. Who should Luke be fighting with? And I don't know that some of the other guys, and I know that those middleweights, right? And this is off the top of my head without pulling it up. I know a lot of those middleweights just got sucked off the board. We just signed a whole bunch of fights. I believe Gastelum is still free, but I think Whitaker signed to fight with somebody. Till signed to fight with somebody. Cannoneer signed to fight with somebody. And so did Paulo Costa. Like a lot of the players have come off the board, but I think that Luke needs to look at that board a little bit better. 
Luke going out and wasting his time talking about Adesanya, that's a really interesting match for me, but there's no point in talking about it because Luke can't get it. He just can't get that match right now. He's going to have to do something in between. He's likely going to have to do two somethings, and he's likely to have to do those two somethings very, very well. I'm just sharing for you. What does Luke want to do that's realistic, that we can do? I'm sure Luke's willing to step in there right now with Whitaker. I'm sure he's willing to fight Till without having the page right in front of me. But I believe I just saw a week ago, all those 85 pounders got snatched up. They're all doing something. The only one of consequence that's available is Gatslam. And he's only available because he just fought three weeks ago, right? It's one of those uh, spots. I think that Holland versus Luke is an interesting match. The fact that Holland is now at AKA and the fact that Luke left the AKA, I think you have a built-in storyline. We also need somebody with Holland that doesn't have this huge wrestling pedigree. I think that's where Luke could start to check boxes. And guys, I'm not trying to sell you on the idea of, of a fight between Hazmet Shabayev or and Luke Rockhall, or even with Kevin Holland versus Luke Rockhall. What I'm trying to do is to point out, we would like to see Luke. If Luke says he's coming back, that's good news for fight fans. Luke's out there doing interviews and spitting venom. That's good for the fight business. We like those kinds of things. Some point, we got to find somebody realistic, which only means somebody that doesn't have a fight. And I have been surprised that it's not coming the other way. Luke is going to bring a lot to the table just because of that former championship status. Why is nobody calling him out? I mean, Luke's out here saying, the reason I'm not fighting right now is because nobody will fight me. I can't say he's lying. I haven't heard one middleweight calling for Luke. And I would wonder why. The history of the sport says you beat a former champion, you get a championship fight. That's the history of this sport. Boxing's the same way. And I understand it doesn't snap your fingers and it's very next automatically. But if you go back and look more times than not, it is automatically. It is next. You go beat a former champion, you now just became a top contender for a championship. It seems as though guys would want to be getting their hands on Luke, but they don't. And most guys that come out and say what Luke said, which is, yeah, I'm not fighting because nobody will fight me. They're pounding their chest and they're trying to get bravado. But I'm looking around going, man, I think he's telling the truth because I don't see anybody calling him out. And it seems like a good game good name to get on the docket with unless you're scared of Luke, unless you just don't want to fight. I mean, that's okay too. Your job is to take the easiest fight for the biggest paycheck. But I think Rockhold is shooting straight with us. He can't find an opponent. I'm not answering a question here. I'm asking a question, but my question is why? 